In this video, I'm going to show you what is probably the most common wiring connection that DIYers and homeowners make. And it just so happens to be what is probably the most difficult one to make properly. And I'm also going to show you the proper way of doing it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is probably the most common connection made for homeowners is going from stranded wire to solid core wire. So what a lot of people will do is they'll take their two wires. Here's our stranded that's coming from, say, our light fixture. And here's our solid core that's coming out of the ceiling or the wall or house wiring. They'll just put those up next together, even with each other. And then they'll take one of those crappy wire nuts and they'll just put it in on top and they'll start twisting it. So one of the first big mistakes that a lot of people make is they strip too much insulation off of their wiring. And if this exposed wiring was to make contact with something metal or the fixture itself and it's not grounded or it's not grounded properly or it just causes arcing, you can have all sorts of issues, again, ranging from just shorting out the circuit to possibly causing a fire. So you wanna make sure that you trim the proper amount of insulation off for the wire nut that you are using. Whereas when you buy proper and good wire nuts, if you just look at the packaging, you can see here where it actually tells you how much to strip off. It says strip wires one half of an inch. So that is the first mistake that a lot of DIYers make is just not stripping the proper amount of insulation off. So pay attention to the recommendations or the installation instructions on the splicing device that you choose to use as far as how much insulation needs to be removed. All right, so for this next mistake, what a lot of people will do is we've got our wire trimmed down to that half inch like we want it to be. And then what they'll do is they'll just put them up right next to each other and they'll go and they'll tighten down their wire nut. All right, so we've got it twisted together. We give our wires a pull to make sure they can't just pull out of the wire nut and it seems as though they're in there nice and tight. But let's go ahead and slowly take this wire nut off. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but the stranded wire did start to twist around the solid core wire. But as you can see, the stranded wire got pushed down. As that wire nut is being twisted on and it's compressing onto that wire, it's actually gonna start pushing that stranded wire down. And while this may or may not cause an issue, there is a possibility, depending on how much it does push this down, to where the stranded wire would barely be being held on in the metal or the connection point of this wire nut, that stranded wire can and has in the past fallen right out of that wire nut. And if we look at the instructions and we look at this diagram, you can see where they don't show that the stranded wire should be right up next to the solid core wire. They actually show the stranded wire being slightly up or above the end of the solid core wire. So in other words, instead of putting these wires to where both of the tops are flush with each other, we actually want that stranded wire to be up slightly higher than the solid core wire. And that's going to give it that room to where when it gets pushed down, then it's gonna wrap around it a lot better. And it's also not gonna get pushed down so far that there's that possibility of a wire coming out. So let's go ahead and do it that way with the stranded wire slightly ahead of or above the solid core wire. Make sure we twist it on there nice and tight. Now let's go ahead and slowly take that wire nut off and see where we ended up. All right, so as you can see, it did get pushed down slightly, but not to where it's below the solid core wire. It is right up there exactly at the same height or length as that solid core wire. So we got a lot more surface contact. We got a lot better connection underneath of this wire nut. And so this would be considered a good connection. All right, so now for the next mistake, what will happen is, all right, we've got our wires stripped to the proper length. They're both at a half an inch. They put their wires straight up next to each other. They take their better wire nut or a wire nut in general, and they just slip it right on top. And they just twist it on until they start feeling some tension and then they just leave it like so. Well, the problem with this is because they did not twist it per the instructions, they did not twist it nearly enough, we have what is gonna be a very bad connection underneath of this wire nut, and it also has the possibility of a wire falling out over time. It does not take a whole lot of strength to just pull that wire out. So if these are not making a good connection, they're not starting to twist around each other underneath of the wire nut, 
then you run the risk of the possibility of a wire possibly coming loose and causing a bunch of issues. So it's always important to make sure that these are being twisted down and not just by a little bit, but make sure you're following the directions on the packaging. Not only are they showing that the stranded wire is slightly taller or ahead of the solid core wire here, and then we want to twist it down to where you can see that it's starting to twist underneath of the wire nut on the insulated portion. So how should that look? So let's start with our stranded wire slightly ahead of or above the solid core wire. Take our wire nut, put it on top, and then we're gonna twist. And we're gonna keep twisting. We're starting to see a little bit of twisting going on down below the wire nut on the insulated part like so, just like the diagram showed. So now let's go ahead and slowly take this wire nut off. And as you can see, that stranded wire is twisting around that solid core wire. So we have what is called a good joint here. But on top of that, with the wires just starting to twist down below where the wire nut goes on, where this insulation is, this also is going to help keep these wires stuck together to where one wire can't just fall out of the wire nut. So altogether, when this is done and done properly, and that wire nut is on there nice and tight, and we have just a little bit of this twisting going on down below the wire nut. And so this connection is one that should provide not only a very good connection, but also last for a very, very long time. But a great option for DIYers and homeowners alike, especially people that don't have a whole lot of experience with connecting wires together. There is another technique that can be done or another product that can be used outside of the wire nuts. An easier installation would come in the form of using these splicing devices like this. These are lever connectors. Now this particular one is made by Wago. This is the Wago 221 series. This is a two port connector that connects wires together. They also make a three port and a five port wire connector. On top of that, they also have these inline connectors here. But the reason why these are so DIY friendly is the way that they work is obviously we've got our two ports here. And then we've got these levers that are in on top. If we flip our levers up, now our ports are open and all we have to do in that at that point is take our stranded wire. And we would wanna make sure that our stranded wire is twisted with itself. Once that's done, then we can just push that up into that lever connector and then flip it over here to the bottom. And as you can see, it's clear. So you can tell that your wire is all the way up to the top. We also have copper down below the bus bar here. The bus bar is what makes the connection between the two wires. Once that's verified, then the lever can be flipped down on that wire. Take the second wire, push that into the second port, check again, make sure that it's up towards the top and everything's making a good connection and then flip that lever down. Now, some of you may have caught that I messed this connection up. So these are not 100% foolproof. There are still mistakes that can come with using these. If you do not pay attention, just like with wire nuts, if you do not pay attention to the instructions, you can also have issues with these. But if we look up there really closely, you can see there's still some copper that is exposed coming out of the bottom of this Wago connector. So I did not strip the proper amount of insulation off of this wiring in order to fit in this Wago connector properly to where we would not have the possibility of there being exposed copper. And in that case, we could possibly have arcing. If it makes contact with other metal, we can short out the circuit. And if you have arcing and things of that nature, you can possibly also have a fire. But what's great about these Wagos is if we flip it over here to the side, both sides have all the information you're going to need. But on this side over here, we have a strip gauge right there that will show us exactly how much wire needs to be exposed or how much insulation needs to be removed off of each wire. Now, while these are incredibly DIY friendly, there's also something that you need to be very aware of because this is a very common mistake or issue that comes up not only with DIYers, but with anybody that uses these types of connectors. And that's when you've got your wires connected, you're ready to push this back into an electrical box. And while you're pushing this into that box, one of these levers, you see how easy that is for that lever to come up? Now in that position, that wire is still not gonna come out. It does take away from the integrity some, but not enough to where that wire would release. 
But with it up in this position already, it's not hard for this to catch onto a wire or the side of the box or just something inside of the box itself. And when you're pushing this into the box, that lever can very easily be pushed up. It does not take a ton of force and the wire can just fall out either while you're pushing it in or it might fall out after you've already covered everything up and you think everything is fine only to find out later that either your receptacle or your light that you use this on is not working or it's intermittently working or it's flickering or at worst case you have arcing and a possible fire. And I know there are gonna be people out there that are gonna say that doesn't really happen, but I'm telling you right now, I've seen it happen. I've heard from people in the comments all over the place that this has been an issue for them in the past. So if this hasn't happened to you, great. Take this as just a reminder that when you are installing these, when you have your wires all connected, you've got your levers down, I recommend to either put your thumb over those levers as you're pushing it into that box until you've got them set where you want them in the box. Do not let go of those levers. At the very least, confirm that they're still connected once you do have them set in the box. Or you could also just take a strip of electrical tape and just wrap it around here once and that will also hold the levers down. But again, this is a very common issue that I just don't see a whole lot of people that talk about these. They don't really bring this issue up and I really think that it is one that needs to be addressed. It doesn't take away from the Wagos. They're still a really good device for a lot of installs. It's just a part of the installation process to make sure that you just take that added step. So I highly recommend for the DIYer, if you're interested in these Wagos, whether it's the inline connector or the block lever connectors, or if you're someone that really likes wire nuts, I'll have links for all of these connectors and all of the tools that you saw in this video. I'll have links for everything down in the description down below. When you click on those links, it'll take you directly to them to where you can check them out for yourself. Now, this was just one of the most common wiring projects that DIYers face. I did a video in the past where I go over the majority of wiring connections that DIY wires are gonna face or do in their own homes. Not only does it include what I showed you here today, but it includes a lot of those other connections, the mistakes that are commonly made, unfortunately. And then I go over the proper ways or better techniques of making those connections. So not only do they work, but they also last a very long time. So if you'd be interested in learning more about that, I'll post a link to that video right over here. When you click on it, it will take you directly to it. So hopefully you found value in this video and you found it to be informative. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.